The ancient Amerindians called this land Arima, the land of water. It was a lush and fertile region nestling against the base of the beautiful northern range. Today, it remains in part the domain of what is left of this aboriginal people. In the main, however, Arima as we know it is a growing, bustling town which takes pride in its beautiful women, its friendly quasi-rural charm, and its growing industrial and commercial base. In short, the past, present, and the future blend smoothly, making this borough a microcosm of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Arimians are always anxious to tell you that Arima is the only royal borough in the Western Hemisphere an honor bestowed on them by the late Queen Victoria in 1888, following a petition by the Burgesses of what was then a one-mile square backwater town. In August of 1986, Arimians celebrated the 90th anniversary of this royal favor when they hosted the Lord Mayor of London. May Arima flourish forever, and may those links which tie our two countries together grow ever stronger. According to Mayor Leroy Morris, such celebrations are a source of great pride, even in this era of republicanism. Anything that happens in Arima, and where the people are still involved, they like to maintain that sort of situation. The Carib is one. Santa Rosa Festival is one, the Royal Charter is a, a, another. Trinidad and Tobago could go anyhow they want to go. People in Arima will maintain that Royal Charter because it means so much to the older heads. And I as mayor would never ever, it would be political suicide for one day to tell the public of Arima, look, we are through with the Royal Charter because we are now an independent country. Political suicide. What we've got to do is, and what we are continuing to do, is to maintain the celebrations. Because this is what Arima wants. This is what the, 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 the elder people of Arima wants. Because we were established the Royal Charter in the year 1888 by Queen Victoria. The Royal Charter is there for everyone to see. And yet, in spite of this pride and heritage, this seemingly atavistic clinging to the past, the actual charter could not be located when researchers for this program try to videotape or photograph it. The Caribs have had to face a similar fate to that of that charter, remaining largely unsung and unknown to the youth of the nation or even of the town itself. On ceremonial occasions, the Carib Queen is honored as a symbol of the few descendants of pre-Columbian Trinidadians, but generally, the Caribs seem to be ignored, relegated to the status of an anachronism. Mayor Leroy Morris, however, does not agree with this viewpoint. Although they are more or less extinct at this point in time, um, they do have a very important role to play in the of Arima. As a matter of fact, we support them all the way. And um, just recently, I've just given the Carib community about 10 lots of lands with the original Caribs that are just left. 10 lots of lands so they can secure in the original area, which is Calvary, so they can secure a place to live. The Carib have their own center, their own culture, and that sort of thing. And I think they are well placed. But the thing is this, that the Caribs are almost, at this point in time, extinct. And the younger ones would find it difficult to fit into that sort of environment because they are now occupying the other aspects, the other cultural aspects of Trinidad and Tobago. If there is a divergence of views on or even a hint of irresponsibility in Arima's approach to its rich cultural heritage, there seems to be nonetheless a universal sense of purpose in dealing with the material development of the borough and its environs. The Arima business community, for instance, shows an impressive degree of commitment. 
Miller Law is an executive of Ideal Supply Stores, one of the older business houses in the borough. He is typical of this spirit of confidence. Twenty years ago, when I came into the business, so well, my dad and mom were still here. And compared to now, it's, it's much better now than those days. I'd say those days, okay, prices were much cheaper, but the business was not as fast as now. Anyone who wants to try a business, I think he can succeed in Arima. Raj Jadu, who runs Charon's bookstore, a stone's throw away, is representative of a newer commercial generation, but his attitude is not very different. Being a marketing man is that looking at the whole East West corridor, we thought that it was fit to come in into Arima because you find that it was very inconvenient for people to leave Let's say Arima, Sandy Grandi, even Tuna Puna, and go for books in Port of Spain. So we said, look, one of the most uh, uh, thing, the, the best thing to do at this point in time was either to hit Sandy Grandi or Arima. But we already got a chance in Sandy Grandi, so this, we all decided, well, look, the best bet is to come to Arima. Now, with the help of my brother, of course, who is, he is versed in books and stationery, so, of which at that time I was not is that we said, well, look, this would be the best opportunity, is to try our best in, in Arimo. It already had one or two other bookstores, but they were not efficient, I, th I should say, and not servicing the schools the way that they're really supposed to. So we took advantage of a situation like that, and I think it has proved to be damn good. The Arima is best syndrome is not restricted to older business houses, to indigenous Aremians, or even to those who operate in the center of town. On the Omera industrial estate, which has only recently become an integral part of the borough, the same quiet pleasure in commercial geography is equally evident. At Specialist Fenity Limited, we spoke to two directors, Simon Healy and Romeo Belfonte. We realized there was quite a degree of labor in the Arima area that we could draw on. We started on a very small scale. Um, in fact, when we started, we started with eight employees, including ourselves. And we started on the eastern main road, just as you approach Arima, in a two-story house that we converted into a manufacturing operation. Um, three or four years later, we put plans afoot to move into this industrial estate here in Arima. I would say um, we are satisfied with the move that we've made to this industrial estate. Um, I think it's going to be, things are going to be tough for some time to come. Uh, we are certainly, as specialists for NHA, going to do our bit to see that um, we continue to create um, employment for the individuals in the Arima area. Um, but as I said, I think it's going to be a tough haul for the next couple of years. We have changed our, our, our mode of operations um, within the last year in that when we opened this plant, um, we were doing mainly upholstered furniture. Now, because of the downturn, we find it very necessary to diversify. Even the serious economic recession now plaguing the nation has not completely dampened the spirit of the people of Arima. This is evident in the attitude of hometown folks as well as newcomers to the business scene. Now the thing is that when people are earning money, they spend money, they build houses, they buy furniture. And what has been good is a lot of the factories that have been put on the industrial estate actually have been involved in do these things. So you have people creating fittings for houses as well as furniture and construction material. My personal view is that Arima has grown in the last five to eight years. I think it will continue to grow, right? With all the industrialized developments, there's factories and so on. And in the surrounding areas, the population has grown to a great extent. And I think that, you know, the consumers, there will always be consumers there, and the need for business will always be there. We saw great prospects there in Arima. And also, the, we knew, um, according to studies done there, that the people would um, appreciate the traditional spicy taste they would get 
at Sunday Basket. Also, there was a great demand for our type of business there. I think Sunday Basket is a household name there, and I think, you know, by all means, we would stay there. Arena is capable of developing into the major. It is already the major city in the East, and maybe one of the major cities in Trinidad. I'm not going to say that we're going to take away from Port of Spain or Port of Spain is, but I believe we can match it. Another important thing that is always overlooked is the proximity of Arima to Piaco Airport. The feeling of optimism and pride in the physical growth of Arima can be partly attributed to changes in political geography, which has resulted in a 16-fold increase in the area of the borough overnight, from one mile square to four miles square. The borough now incorporates the dormitory communities such as Malabar, as well as the Omera Industrial Estate, giving a new sense of identity to previously peripheral housing clusters and business enterprises. Of course, this expansion has placed severe additional strains on already overburdened social services, such as education, health, and sanitation facilities. And while increased revenue from the swollen list of Burgesses may be almost adequate to deal with matters such as garbage collection, the more serious problems of hospital beds and school places have been dangerously aggravated. This aspect of the expansion is not one which the previous political directorate was anxious to discuss. For instance, Ashton Ford, former MP for Arima and former parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Public Utilities, preferred during our interview to stress other aspects of the new dispensation. Nothing stopping the council from utilizing the resources of the purchases in Arima, or any other council for that matter. The, the, the ordinance gave them that power. And this is why you find that a number of areas the council would have embarked on self-help projects. I know for a fact the, the banks, the commercial banks, assisted the council in one or two projects at the Princess Royal Park. There's nothing to stop. It is because we have grown accustomed and we, we are dependent on central government that there is the uh, feeling that we cannot do anything without the input from central government. But the ordinance is there, it gives them the right to do it and to embark on self-help projects. Uh, there is nothing to stop that. Not all Oremians are so sanguine in their reaction to the inadequacies in health and education facilities, which leads to untold frustration. This ability to run your own affairs has been taken away from us. Right now, our Arima Borough Council will be celebrating our 100th anniversary in the next two years. But our borough council is just functioning as a, more or less as an honorary thing. It is not really the type of um, structure that it was intended to, because it is ridiculous that anything, that any decision that has to be made has to be approved in Port of Spain. Now, I resent this. This has nothing political to do with it, that I resent it as an Iranian, because I look at it that we should be allowed to run our own affairs. We should be allowed to make decisions. Take, for example, our hospital. This is built in colonial time. We are supposed to be an independent nation. And under this system, we should have got a hospital. Arameans cannot use Mount Hope Maternity Hospital unless you establish a residence. You have to go and live at your tante in St. Joseph if you're having a baby, or stay at your makume in, in Aruka during the last few months to qualify to have your baby at St. Joseph Hospital. Because we don't have a maternity ward here. We do have a hospital here. And yet we're not eligible to. So you either have your baby at home, which is OK. But it's not everybody in this modern time in the current system who could have a baby at home because we don't have the old aunt and the old nanny. It takes courage to try to predict the future today. Nevertheless, insofar as Arima is concerned, there's an abounding hope and unflinching faith in the economic future. Jai Ramkatun, chairman of Supermix Feeds and a string of associate companies, epitomizes that faith. 
in the agriculture and the food sector, we haven't had any problem. And even within the poultry industry, we have a slight dip. But within that slight dip we have there, we have gone into the housing area, which we have been able to employ about five or six hundred people. So the little slack that I had in my feed milling and the farming, I took over to the housing. And also we are now employing more and more people in the housing sector. So therefore, recession has not really taken any toll at all on me. And even businessmen operating outside the borough limits show real commitment to ARIMA. Beskreet's Wilfred Leelam is a good example of this. Our first uh, supervisor uh, was born in ARIMA, and uh, he, of course, brought in um, men from ARIMA to work with us and staff to work with us in ARIMA. And uh, we have very close um, uh, contacts or, or when you say relationships with the Arima hardware stores and uh, with the governmental agencies in Arima. This then is Arima, land of water, of beauty and charm, of growth, of hope and of faith in the future. An area whose people symbolize that love for their roots which the rest of Trinidad could do well to emulate.